Hi, this is Patrick and welcome to this video on making a screencast using the Loon Pro software. Now, Loon Pro is free now for educators, so I'm going to show you how to go through that sign-up process. It's very easy. Most of the video is going to be about how to make a screencast using the Loon software and then sharing it with your students. In a separate video, I'm going to talk about kind of the things you need to think about as you're creating a screencast to help make the best product that you can for your students. So what can you do with Loon Pro? You can make individual videos that I call screencasts. You can actually trim out parts of the created video. So in other words, if you have some misspeak or kids run in the room or something, you can actually trim those parts out. You can also then export the videos, not only within the Loom software and sharing it with your students individually, but you can also export it to a very standard format, which is called MP4. There are limitations to Loom Pro. The biggest one being that you have to have access to the internet to be able to use the program because it creates the videos online. Also, there's very limited editing capabilities. Yes, you can trim out individual parts uh, of the video that you want to get rid of. Every screencaster does that, but it's very, very limited what you do. There are no multimedia effects or editing either. So you can't put in additional features like arrows, highlighting, uh, additional text maybe, or even links, things like that. Also, importantly, you can't splice multiple videos together. In other words, I can't make a small uh, video on Loom and another small video on Loom on about two different but related things and then splice them together. Uh, if these things are an issue, you should consider, if you're doing a lot of screencasting, the program called Camtasia or something like that. But they do cost money. I'll be more than happy to help you with that or any of this if you have any questions about it. So let's walk through the process for signing up for Loom Pro. And the nice thing about it as a teacher, if you sign up here soon, it is free, the professional version. So you go to loom.com education, and this window appears. You're going to click on Get Loom for free. Now, I can't, if I do that, it's just going to go right into my Loom account. But when you do that, uh, Get Loom for free, it's going to give you some options. The option you're going to want to download is the desktop app version. Uh, that's going to give you all the bit of uh, the abilities to open up other programs on your computer like PowerPoint and things like that and be able to effectively use them within Loom. So you want that desktop app version. So go ahead and follow through those steps. You need to, you'll create an account and uh, verify your email account with them and then it'll allow you to download the app. Once you have downloaded the app, it's time to create a screencast and I'm gonna walk you through the steps for that. The first thing you have to do is cl double click on the Loom icon, which if you've installed the app, is now gonna appear on your desktop. Of course, you do have to make sure you're connected to the internet, and then click on the Loom app. Um, this is the main menu for Loom recording. You have three options for how you want to uh, set up your, your screencast. The preferred options for most students, believe it or not, is uh, to have your screen out on there plus a little version of you down in one of the corners. Research has shown on screencasting that students want to see their teacher. If you just want to show the screen, then you click screen only and then the um, you know your picture disappears. You can also go to a cam only view if uh, for example, you just wanted to show yourself um, maybe holding something or there was something that's beyond the screen that you want to do, uh, you can go to a camera only version as well. Now one of the other things you want to be sure of is to make sure your devices are here. So right now I'm using my um, webcam on my, my computer at home. Uh, your laptop computer will have a similar kind of thing for the webcam. That It shows me my internet speed is slow, that's because I'm at home in the middle of nowhere. Um, the bottom line though, you do want to make sure, you're, sure your produced video is at about a resolution of 720p. You get a lot of choices, of course, with Loom, but 720p is the best kind of trade-off because remember your students may be downloading this on a device that doesn't have a good internet connection. Um, 720 is still a very good quality in terms of seeing things on the screen, while at the same time being a moderate drain on their resources. So click Start Recording after you've done that. And then you're going to get a little countdown, three, two, one. And whatever you do now on the screen is going to appear. Now off on the left, if you start hitting these, if, if you scroll all the way to the left, you'll see buttons that allow you to stop, pause, completely destroy, or even in uh, this pro version, annotate the screen. So you could say, 
you know, you could add add things to the screen, like hi. Okay, I'm sure you have much better things to say than hi, but that is one nice thing that this software does give you. Again, when you're ready to stop the video and then edit it, just press that big red button. You don't see all the buttons until you hover your mouse over here on the left. Uh, if I wanted to pause for a second, I just click, click the pause button. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and that's going to be the end of my Loom video, and you're going to see... Okay, so it takes Loom a little bit of time to process it once you hit the stop button. Uh, and that's going to depend on your internet connection, how long that takes. I'm here at home, slow internet connection. It's going to take a little bit of time for this to come up. Okay, once you've made your video in Loom, it's now time to edit it and get it to your students. So to be able to edit a video, you're, once your video is uploaded to, to Loom, you're going to see all these bottom right hand corner all highlighted and available for use. The one we're going to focus on right now is trim. And when you pull up trim, it's going to allow you to watch the video and cut out what, do what you don't like. Okay. So for example, I, let's say I listen to it and there's just part of the video I don't like. You're going to click over here on start trimming. And then as you play back the video and, um, find parts that you like or don't like, you highlight them with this little red area. You know, for example, I like to get rid of things like where I say, uh, or I, you know, maybe I'll say something and I just didn't really say it the right way, but then a few seconds later I did, I'm gonna edit out, of course, the part that's wrong. So, and you can do that from within any part of the video. Just highlight the part you want and then click remove and it's gonna be gone and it's going to trim that part of the video out. And the new video, once it's uploaded, will no longer have that portion. And if, to go back to that main menu, you're gonna click uh, Return to Video. If you wanna make the changes, you click Publish Changes. If you don't, you click Discard. So trim is how you're going to edit your video. So now it's time to share what you've created and edited with your students or, or others. So there's a couple of ways to do this in Loom. Um, one way is to copy the link to the video. Now this Lumen in a way is kind of like YouTube. It's a repository for video. So you could actually click copy the link and then you can paste that link anywhere you want to send to your students. This does actually give you some power because you can make that available to anybody in Google search or you could only allow people with the actual link to use it that's one way you could do it. You can even add a password if you really wanted to keep this limited to people who had the link, they'd have to have the password to get it. You can do whatever you want. That is a more secure way perhaps to uh, to share this with your students. The method I use for screencasts is to create my products as .mp4 files because mp4 files are usable pretty much anywhere. A downside of a link is a person has to have internet access. The nice thing about an MP4 file is that you can download it onto a computer or other device and then it's playable without the internet. One suggestion for you would be to use this download button. You click on it. Now again, since Loom is using the internet, it's gonna take some time for this to download. When it does, it's going to generate an MP4 file that I can save on my computer and share with my students that way. Now it should be noted that MP4 files can be uploaded to YouTube. So that's another very useful way to, uh, to use this is to send to YouTube. For example, I have YouTube channels for all the classes I've created um, with screencasts. Now you can see this is a slow process. When it's done, it is going to create that video for you. Now while I'm waiting for it to finish downloading, um, I'm going to show you what a couple of the other buttons do. Like if you wanted to maybe add a link or something at the end of your video, you could press this call to action button. And what that does is you could put that there and then you would have to put the URL of the button that it's going to link to. Once you do that, then you can hit save. That's going to appear at the end of the video and maybe it's a link to other resources for your student at the end. When your video is downloaded, a file manager window will come up and you can save it wherever you want. 
and then just hit save and that mp4 file is available for you to upload to youtube share directly with your students uh, whatever just a couple of extra tips for you if you go to on the main loom menu you go to my videos you'll see all the videos you've created using loom but if you click over here on how to use loom this is going to give you a ton of extra resources not only on just the mechanics of how to use loom but some really good advice from other teachers on how to use Loom for uh, education. I hope this video on making a screencast using Loom Pro has been useful to you. Uh, I'm available anytime. If you have further questions, I'm more than happy to help you. Thank you.